season replays, fantasy drafts, ultimate created leagues, and what if tournaments. It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach, DKM. Hey, hey, hey. It's Coach DK, and we are continuing our series as we're getting ready to wrap up our initial season of the year 1900. Today we will be again in the American League. We have the Indianapolis Hoosiers um, going against the Milwaukee Creams. So as you can tell, both teams are above 500. Both of them have done very, very well this year. Um, and so let's go ahead and look at where the season is and standings. You can see the Indianapolis Hoosiers are in second place originally. Um, they came in third. Um, they're winning about 56, 57 percent of the games. Originally only won like around 52 and a half. Um, but they are right there in the mix, right behind the Chicago Invaders, who are in the lead. Originally had won the American League in the year 1900. But Milwaukee, who originally had come in second place, currently is in fourth. They are behind. Um, Indianapolis by five games, but this is a very, very good game. Milwaukee's trying to hold on to that fourth spot over top of Detroit. As you can tell, Detroit is trying to push Milwaukee. Cleveland is right in the mix with Indianapolis, who's obviously still competing for the number one spot. So this has very much playoff implications. Um, in the National League, you see Brooklyn is still with a um, in first place. They've actually expanded their lead. Boston and St. Louis are really fighting for number two. Pittsburgh, who had struggled at the beginning of the season, was all the way down at seventh for a couple months, has shot up. They are now actually making a run, getting back close to 500. Um, but we are in the midst of ending the season. Uh, we are about 135, 140 games in. So we have about maybe three more weeks, four more weeks left, and then we jump into the playoffs. Um, let's check out the starting lineups for the Indianapolis Hoosiers. Uh, Topsy Hartzell will be playing left. He'll be leading off. He's currently on a 15-game hitting streak. Um, Magoon will be playing second and batting second. Sox Seabold um, will be playing center field. He's batting third. He has three home runs and 11 RBIs in his last 10 games, so he's been on fire. I believe he might be second in the league in uh, home runs. Uh, Hickey... Um, great name, is batting uh, fourth. He's playing third. He's been hitting 436, so his bat's been on fire lately. Powers, the first baseman, will be batting fifth. Hall Driver, the right fielder, who's also been doing very well, is hitting 359 in the last 10 games. He's playing uh, right field, batting sixth. Madison, the shortstop, batting seventh. Hayden, the catcher, will be batting eighth. He's been struggling, probably one of the few hitters, as you can tell, that has been struggling, but he's been hitting 160. And on the mound will be Wynn Kellum. He started 32 games this year. He is 17 and 10. He has a 2.32 ERA, so a very, very good pitcher for the Hoosiers. We will be uh, managing the Milwaukee Creams. Um, we have Anderson, the center fielder, uh, leading off. We have Fultz, the shortstop, batting second. Jaeger, um, I think it's Jaeger, but it might be Jaeger, um, the first baseman, with batting third. Reitz, um, the second baseman, is fourth. Smith, the catcher, is fifth. Uh, Dowd, the left fielder, batting sixth. Waldron, the right fielder, batting seventh. Burke um, is playing third. He's batting eighth. He's been struggling lately, hitting only 152 in the last 10 games. And on the mound will be Dowling. He has 35 starts, a very poor 12 and 15 record, um, but does have an incredible 2.79 ERA. So it should be a good matchup as we have two teams, second place team going against the fourth place team. Both trying to uh, need wins, uh, especially as we get toward the end of the season. But before we jump into the action, I ask you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. And now let's just get ready and jump into the action. Uh, it is a night game. We are at Lloyd Street Grounds in Milwaukee. Um, and so we have about 25% of the games we did set for uh, night games. Um, Silvum 14, S-I-L-V-A-M is in Mary 14. You can Google him. Um, he has a bunch of uh, old and new um, ballparks that he's recreated, trying to stay as close to the originals as possible. I think he does an incredible job, but he includes uh, night as well as daytime that you can, that you can download. Um, but 
sometimes I have to tweak them just based off some of the history that I found. But overall, he's done an incredible job always like getting his videos or his, his picks um, and backgrounds for the ballparks. So let's go ahead and let's get the game started. Hartzell's up. He's going to go ahead and hit a ground ball to second base to Reitz. It's going to be an easy out. That'll be one away. Next up is Magoon. He needs the 1-12. to 12. He's going to hit an 11. So he'll be on first base. He's got some good wheels. Uh, not helping that Dowling is a plus one. And Smith has got a plus one arm behind the mound. He is going to get a decent lead. He's going to steal and gets in there barely um, with a 15 roll. But he does take second. Sox Seabold, who's been on fire lately, is going to rip a single and Magoon does not try to run and score, and with one out, not maybe not a bad choice. Um, Seabold was looking to try to get a lead to take second, wasn't able to do it, so we're keeping an eye on him. And yes, Pat Dowling um, strikes him out. That'll be uh, two down. Definitely needed that one. Uh, Powers, the first baseman, is up. And he's going to hit a ground ball to shortstop. He's going to flip it on over to second to reach, and that'll end the inning. So, even though they got two hits, got runners on the corners uh, with one away, we did get out of that one. So, leading off for us will be Anderson. He's hitting 296 this year. And so, he's up to bat. He's going to hit a ground ball to short, and that is going to be an easy out. Next up is Fultz, the shortstop. He's going to rip a single. He's hitting 312 this year. So, getting him on first is great. Um, unfortunately for us, we'll kill him the lefty. And he's a minus three arm, and Hayden, the catcher, has a minus one. So it's going to be hard to get some steals in here. Yeager is up. He's our first baseman. He is going to be struck out when Killam gets a strikeout. That's his 71st strikeout of the year. Next up for us is the very, very rarely used Reitz. Um, originally, he only had 27 at-bats. Apparently, this year, he's got 90. Obviously, um, expend, expanding the season to 162 games is going to help that, but he is hitting 444. He has 13 doubles. I feel like this is one of those cards that is just a cheap card to be able to get, but he's going to get back to the pitcher. He's going to flip it on over, and that'll be end of the inning. Hog River is up. He is got, he's a 1-8 to eight for a double. He gets a 9, so lucky for us. He, that's going to be a single, though, and he's going to try to get a lead. He does get it. We're going to try to see if we can still get him. We do not. He is safe. They have two stolen bases on us so far. Dowling is definitely hurting us with that plus one and Smith with a plus one. But it is a battle of the South Falls. Madison's up. This looks like a, his picture looks like a, some sort of senator or president from the 1800s. Um, but he's going to pop out and that'll be one away. Next up is the catcher, Hayden. He's going to hit a fly ball to center field. Anderson's going to be able to slide on over there. And make the snag, and that'll be two away. And lucky for us, the pitcher's up. Uh, but he is going to draw a walk. Dowling gives a free pass to the pitcher. Topsy Hartzell's up. He's hitting 360 this year. One of the best hitters in the American League. Um, he has nine home runs. Wow. Um, 73 RBIs. Topsy Hartzell um, is obviously a player who's been... Having a really good season. He is on a 15-game hitting streak, but it will not continue this time. For So for the second inning in a row, uh, the Hoosiers have two runners on, a runner in scoring position, obviously, and are not able to capitalize. We're up now. It's going to be Smith, our catcher. He's going to hit a fly ball to right, and that will be one away. Next up is Dowd. He is going to line out the third. Um, that'll be two down. Waldron is going to be up, and he's going to hit a ground ball. Magoon's going to be able to swing on over there, <clears throat> throw at the first base, and that'll be the inning. So, one, two, three inning. Magoon is up. He singled the last time at bat. He's hitting 346 this year. He, unfortunately, this time for him, fortunate for us, is going to ground out to Yeager at first. Sox Seabold is up. Man with a lot of power. He does have 14 home runs for the year, 84 RBIs. He is, I think, second in the league. In home runs, as mentioned earlier, but that will be a fly out. And next up is Hickey, the third baseman. He's going to strike out. And so second strikeout for Dowling, and that'll be a 1-2-3 inning. We now enter the bottom of the third with Burke being up. He needs a 1-5 to five for a double. He pulls a 3. So our number 8 hitter, who's been struggling lady, lately in the last 10 games, hitting about 160, I believe, is going to pull a double. That's definitely going to help. 
Our pitcher is up. We are going to bunt, try to get him, get Burke over to third. And it is a close play, but the uh, bunt does work. Burke takes third. We have now our, first, our leadoff man up and only one away. Unfortunately for us, Kellum now gets his second strikeout. And now Fultz is up, and he's going to ground out. So we get a runner all the way over third. Two hitters up to be able to knock him in are not able to do it. So, so far, uh, Hoosier's been getting the hits. Um, they have three hits. We have two. There have been no errors committed, but it is a 0-0 zero, zero game. Or as a soccer coach, it's nil-nil. Um, so going to the top of the fourth, Powers, the first baseman's up. He's the number five hitter. He needs a one for a home run. It's going to be a 17, so it's not even going to be that close. And so that will be an out as Anderson gets on his horse and gets that out. Oh, and another strikeout, the 79th strikeout. That is Dowling's third of the game. Madison is now up, the shortstop, and he's going to line out the first. So Dowling, after giving up, allowing two runners on in the first and two runners on in the second, has gone one, two, three in consecutive innings. And now Wynn comes up and Jaeger's up, and he is going to draw a walk. Wrights is up. He is... Uh, been on fire but unfortunately this time he's going to ground out into a double play that's not what we needed smith now gets the walk so that is i think the second walk yep second walk of the game and now dowd's going to be up he needs a one to six he's going to get a nine a one to ten not going to take a 50 percent chance on this one uh, with two away so Waldron is going to be up. He's a right fielder. He's hitting 281 this year, but he is going to hit third. He's going to um, fire it over to second to Magoon, and that will end the inning. So we did have two runners on. Um, we also did have another runner on earlier, but a double play ended that guy. So top of the fifth, Dowling's on the mound. Hayden's at the bat. He's going to rip a single. He's hitting only 218 this year, so... His hits have been far and few between. Um, Kellum is going to bunt. Oh, goodness gracious. Dowling throws the ball away. Runners on second and third. We have the infield in. Hartzell. Does a squeeze play. With the infield in. All right, so Stratomatic, you definitely need to be able to show us the roles with the possibilities of what could happen. I understand Hartzell is an A bunter, but just to be able to have these random things, um, just not liking that piece of it. So Magoon is up. He's going to rip a single. That's going to be the second run of the inning. He's on first. Try to get a lead. He does not... It, they tried to hit and run, and it was a uh, ground ball to Yeager. He just goes over, tag, tags the mound. So that will be two away, but they do have another runner in scoring position, and Hickey is up. He's been hitting 283. He's going to pop out. Um, that will end the inning. But Indianapolis Hoosiers do get two runs in the inning. Uh, obviously not something that we wanted to see. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, this is a battle of the number two and the number four teams um, in the division. And Indianapolis is currently in second, and they are two games above um, Milwaukee. So they are the better team this year, but originally they were not. Burke, who doubled the last time at bat, is going to ground out the second. Our pitcher Dowling's up. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. I think this might be the first time that a player had to actually make a play. Hallgrover's going to have to make a play. And he is going to make it. He does have a range of two, so that's definitely helpful for him. Next up is Anderson. He is 0 for 2 today. He's going to be 0 for 3. as He's going to end the inning with a ground out to Magoon. And so now entering the top of the second. Powers is up. He's going to line out to um, faults at short. That'll be one down. Ooh, Hogriver needs a 
one for a triple. He gets a three, so it will just be a single. But he does have uh, good ability to speed. He's trying to get a lead, doesn't get it. He is still going to try to go. And he is going to be able to take third on the throwing air. Not what we wanted. Infield is in again. Madison's up. He's the number seven hitter. All right. And yes, this time, um, Madison squares around the bunt for another squeeze play. It's popped up, caught by Dowling, who whips it over to third base to double up the runner who had gone. And so that'll be a nice way and an interesting way to get out of the inning. But again, even though this time it worked out in our favor, still would like to see um, the sheet, if you want to call it that, of what could happen to squeeze play as well as the dice roll. Um, just think it would be so much better for the game. Fultz is up. He is going to, looks like, most likely pop it up. He does. Catcher Hayden's going to make the play. One down. Yeager's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to first. We only have three hits this entire game. Callum has just been putting us on ice. And Reitz, though, is going to get the fourth hit for us. Definitely needed something. Smith is up. He is going to hit a fly ball to center field. So this is uh, pretty much a pitching game right now. Um, it is only two runs scored for the Hoosiers, zero runs for Milwaukee. The Hoosiers do have two runs on six hits. They have committed no errors. And Milwaukee has zero runs. They just got their fourth hit. And we have committed two errors so far. Only one of those runs is earned. Um, but it is the bottom of the, or excuse me, the top of the seventh. So we're going to take a break real quick. And we're going to do our player profile. All right, and as mentioned, it is now time for our player profile. And today we're going to be talking about left-handed pitcher, uh, Milwaukee's left-handed pitcher, Pete Dowling. Um, a very interesting story about Pete Dowling that has caused some controversy. Um, many of you may not even know the story, but Pete Dowling was a 5'11", 165 southpaw. Um, grew up in Kentucky, started off his career playing for the Louisville Colonels, um, was his major league career. Um, he pitched there from 1897 to 1899. After that, he uh, went to Milwaukee, where he played for the Milwaukee franchise. Um, and that year 1900 obviously does not count when it comes to official stats, as the American League was not an official major league. But So you take out this season. Um, he played these three seasons with the Colonels prior. He played this year with the, the uh, Milwaukee team. And then he ended up playing for um, both Cleveland and Milwaukee in the year 1901, the first year of the American League. So he did play um, four years. He had a 39-64 and 64 record. He had 300 strikeouts and a very respectful 3.84 ERA. But what makes Pete Dowling so interesting is a game that happened on June 30th, 1901. So there's a couple things that you need to remember. First of all, he played for Milwaukee. He was liked in Milwaukee. He had then been playing for Cleveland. So Cleveland now is playing against Milwaukee at Milwaukee. Pete Dowling's on the mound. He pitches a game where um, he walks four batters, hits a batter, and only one other guy gets on base, and that is Wid Conroy, who is in our replay. Wid Conroy gets on base, and there's controversy of what actually happened. Conroy gets on base, and it is later said that it was an error by the third baseman. Um, the third baseman was Bill Bradley, and so the official game stat from what was recorded was that um, Conroy did not get a hit and an air was issued to Bradley. The problem is, is that they believe that stat was changed after the game and then given to the media so that Dowling, who was obviously liked by both Milwaukee fans and Cleveland fans, um, would be given credit for this incredible game that may or may not have happened as the major league's very first no-hitter. Um, the Society of American Baseball Research, uh, Sabre, 
um, says the most plausible explanation for the divergence, the change from a hit or an error, this, this controversy, is that the official scorer, who was probably a Milwaukee sports writer, changed the hit to an error after the game had ended. That is what Saber says. As of April 2021, so right now it's September, so less than six months ago, RetroSheet and BaseballReference.com do credit Dowling for the first no-hitter. They do give him credit for a no-hitter. Unfortunately, Elias Sports Brewer, the official statistician organization of Major League Baseball, does not recognize it as a no-hitter. So, June 30th, 1901, Pete Dowling, the left-hander pitching for Cleveland, goes against Milwaukee. Question is, did Wid Conroy get a hit? The stat line says no. The official statistician now with Major League Baseball says yes, he did. So this Pete Dowling may have had the very first no hitter. He may not have, but today's profile, player profile and the event that came with it is Pete Dowling. So um, did he have the first no header? You decide. You can do the research, but you know now you know, and as G.I. Joe says, knowing is half the battle, and he's a real American hero. So let's get back to the act. All right, and back to the action we are as we enter the top of the seventh as um, we, the Milwaukee Creams, are down by two in a two-nothing game. Um, when Kellum is having a great game, he's pitching a gem for them. He has not allowed any runs. He's only given up four hits. Dowling's pitching pretty well himself. He's given six, given up six hits, allowed two runs. Only one of them has been earned. But we are in the top of the seventh. Um, the catcher, Hayden, the number eight batter, is up. He does have a hit already for today. He needs a one to 12. He's going to get his second hit of the game. He has two hits in a row. He is now on first. Kellum is up. He's going to Okay, that looked confusing. Um, squares the bunt, Jaeger fields it, then drops the ball. Jaeger picks it up, fires the first. Kellum is out by an eyelash. And so Kellum does get a sacrifice hit. Um, top C, Hartzell's up. He has a 15-game hitting streak. He is going to strike out. Not sure if he's going to get a chance to get back. His 15-game hitting streak might come to an end. Next up is Magoon. He is 2 for 3 with an RBI. Normally, I would walk him, but Sox Seabolt has been en fuego. And maybe this was a bad decision as Magoon gets his third hit, his second RBI. Ah, uh, Sox Seabolt is going to draw a walk, bringing up Hickey. And Hickey's going to line out the third. That's going to end the inning, but 3 nothing. Magoon with his second RBI. And now here's our trivia question. Which pitcher had the unique distinction to have won all-star games for both the American and National League? My first reaction was Nolan Ryan, um, knowing that he pitched for the Mets and the Astros and did also pitch for the Rangers as well as probably many other teams. Um, that was my first reaction. Uh, but I would imagine it would have been done well before him. So I don't really know. We'll just stick with our Nolan Ryan. I don't believe it's him. And the answer is Vida Blue. Um, all right, so it wasn't as early as I would have thought. Vida Blue won in the American League in 1971 and then got the win in the National League in 1981. So um, we've gotten only a couple of those right. I always enjoy the trivia questions. But here we go. Um, Dowd is up. He's our left fielder. He's going to draw a walk, which is a good thing for us. He does have the 55. We might have to take a risk here, see if he can get a lead. And he gets picked off. Show the stinking numbers. Ay. We finally decided to try to take a steal. It doesn't work. We need a 1-5. to five. We get a 6. I know what happened to them. So now Waldron's up. We're going to have to try this again. He is going to not get the lead. We are not going to send him. Burke is up. He has doubled. He's hitting 254. He's going to single to left. 
Waldron has a chance to take third with a 1 of 13, 65% chance. They're going to keep Burke at first. Smart move by them as they have a three run lead. One run is not going to kill them. Dowling is up. We are going to let him hit. He has got a really good two um, line here. So let's see if we can get something. Like, and unfortunately, he's going to hit a fly ball to right field. It looks like it might be deep enough. We are going to send the lead runner. They're going to just hit the cutoff man, give us the run. So Dowling, our pitcher, does get the RBI, um, helping himself out. But they now have a two down runner on first for us. Anderson, our leadoff man, is up. We need a rally, and we are not going to get it as Siebel is going to go ahead, slide on over there, and get the out. So, top of the eighth, we did get a run back. Um, Dowling's still on the mound. He's going to be going against Powers, the first baseman. He is 0 for 3, but he's going to rip a single. So, Hoggraver's up. He's been 2 for 3. He's going to line out. So, that will make um, the first out of the inning. Madison's up. He's going to draw a walk. Dowling just seems to be struggling a little bit here. Hayden's going to be up. It's going to be a ground ball to year. Year's year going to flip it this second for the fielder's choice. So that will put two outs. Runners on the corners. Kellum is up. Will they let him hit? They will. And I would agree with that if I were them. He's only allowed six hits and seven innings with a run. He's going to ground out. Let's see if it was the right decision for Indianapolis. Um, I'm glad that they did that because we got the out. So Fultz is up. He's our number two hitter. He is one for three. He's going to hit a fly out. He'll be one for four. And next up is Yeager. He is struggling. We need him to do something, and he will not. As That looks like that is Kellum's third. I hate the red, by the way. I don't know why they don't do a different color on the stat line. Um, you have, like, their original season... You have their current like replay stats, and then you have their game stats. And the game stats are red, and I just don't know how to change it. But it does absolutely drive me nuts that you have, can't see that. Anyways, um, that will be two away. Reitz is up. He is one for three. He is going to get a double. That will be his 14th double this season. And he is slow. Um... Smith, our catcher's up. He's over two. He did draw a walk. We need a hit here. And he is in a ground ball to third base, which is not going to get past Hickey, who's going to get uh, throw it over to first for the third out. Top of the ninth. Here we go. Three to one. Good game. Hartzell's up. He's over three. A chance to keep his streak alive. He's going to hit back to the pitcher. He throws wild. No. So they said he got an in field single and Dowling then threw it away to allow him to advance to second. So Hartzell keeps his hitting streak alive to 16 games in his in the top of the ninth. Um, just hauling rear to get down to first. Um, we got Magoon up. He's three for four. Two RBIs. Oh, he's in 348. Yeah, we're just going to have to walk this dude. He's just killing us uh, today. Now we're going to go against Sox Seabold, who has had uh, some home runs. Last time we didn't walk him, he's not had an RBI. This time we do intentionally walk him and we decide to go against Sox Seabold. Sox Seabold gets his second hit, an RBI single. Aish. We are not making the decisions that we need to make. Um, in fact, down, uh, hit the back of the pitcher. He's going to throw it to second, get the. I guess it would be the lead runner, but it's not. Um, gets the guy out at second, but they cannot turn the double play. Powers is up. He is one for four. He's not going to be two for five. Another single. We're going to throw for the lead runner. It is going to be thrown away. Our fourth error of the game. They've knocked in three so far. This game has just suddenly gotten out of hand. Dowling is... Uh, Getting hit all over the park. Ground ball to first. He'll take just up on the bag. 
Madison's up. Luckily, he's the only guy that I think we've seen in a while who hasn't had a hit. He's luckily going to keep that streak in the game for us, helping us out, getting going over four with a pop out the first. So we are in the bottom of the ninth. It's not looking good for us. It is uh, six to one. We only have seven hits. We have committed four errors, so we've not helped ourselves on the um, field or at the bat. And so we need an amazing ninth inning rally. Dowd is up. He's going to lead us off with a fly out the center field. That's not the way we need to start. Waldron's up. He's hitting 282 this year. He's going to ground out to the pitcher. That's horrid. Next up is Burke. Burke has um, not been hitting well uh, through the season. And so we're going to find a pitch hitter if we have anybody that looks decent. Our best one might be Diggins, I'm thinking. He can go to third if we need him to. But I'm really not seeing much here. Conroy, who we talked about briefly, was the guy who may or may not have ruined the no-hitter in the seventh inning against um, Pete Dowling. Yeah, let's go with Diggins, see what he can do. I'm just not feeling the love for uh, Burke. And our third time we make a decision that does not pay off, a strikeout. Four strikeout. Ending the game, Callum has just completely dominated us. We can't get anything going. Uh, this is going to make the race, obviously, very, very, very interesting. Um, yeah, for sure. There might be, yeah, it's going to be tight. So Callum um, has to be the player of the game. His 18th win of the season. He pitched a, a gem, giving up only seven hits. Did walk three, but did have four strikeouts. Only one run. It was earned. He lowers his ERA to 2.28. Um, Pete Dowling, who was our player profile, he gave up four earned runs, um, allowed 12 hits. He did walk four, but the story of the game was just Callum's pitching and horrid uh, decisions by the manager for the creams. I don't know what that guy was thinking. He just made some horrible decisions when not to walk guys, when to walk guys, when to pinch hit, when to leave pitchers in a little bit, maybe too long. I just don't think it was a good one uh, by the manager. But um, needless to say, it was a good game. Um, six to one went to them. But we're just going to take a quick look um, at the stats here. As we look at the league stats here, and we can see that this has just helped make um, things a little bit more interesting. Um, the Hoosiers remain two and a half games out, as apparently Chicago also lost. Um, Milwaukee now does get, excuse me, Hoosiers win. They and Chicago win, so they're still two and a half games out. But with Milwaukee losing, they are now tied with the Wolverines of Detroit, with uh, eight and a half games out of first. Cleveland is kind of like in the middle of the two teams, um, trying to hold on to third at least, hopefully trying to make a run for second or even possibly first. But good game. Glad that we did it. Um, until next time, this is Coach DK. Uh, have a good one. Bye.